Five top rated attractions and places to visit in Maine. Few states can claim as many iconic images as Maine. Think of that northern New England state, and immediately springing to mind are fully rigged windjammers, waves breaking against a rocky coast, fishing harbors filled with colorful boats, lighthouses, and tall pine trees. The miles and miles of backwoods inhabited by moose hold their own mystique, conjuring images of a lone canoe barely riffling the mirror like surface of a forest encircled lake, or rainbow trout jumping from crystal waters. The remarkable thing about Maine is that it doesn't disappoint tourists who arrive with these romantic images in mind. Lighthouses do crown points from York to Quiddy Head, and between them lie dozens of snug little fishing harbors and mile after mile of rocky wave beaten shore. Windjammers weave between the fur clad islands just offshore, and bright painted lobster buoys bob in the water, with lobster boats scuttling between them to haul traps. But Maine's attractions aren't all in iconic images, and between its museums, breathtaking gardens, art heritage, historic attractions, outdoor activities, and natural wonders, you're spoiled for choice of things to do on a Maine vacation. Number 5. Old Orchard Beach and Unabashed Old Fashioned Beach Resort. Old Orchard Beach revels in the somewhat tacky honky-tonk atmosphere of its pier and thrill rides at New England's only remaining full-scale amusement park on a beach. So kick off your shoes, step back into mid-century summer fun, and indulge in a little nostalgia. Palace Playland has all the expected rides. A Ferris wheel right over the waves, a roller coaster, an old-fashioned carousel, bumper cars, and a dozen or so other kid-pleasers. Pier stands and street-side windows sell fries, soft ice cream, saltwater taffy, and fried dough. The highlight of all this is a full seven miles of golden sand beach with free public access. The sands are scoured each night by volunteers, so you won't find a cleaner beach anywhere, and separating most of the seven miles of beach from the line of low hotels and shops is a barrier of grassy dunes. Old Orchard is also the only main beach where you can arrive directly by train. The Amtrak station is opposite the pier and amusement park. Number 4. Pemaquid Point Light. One of Maine's most iconic lighthouses stands at the end of the long Pemaquid Point in mid-coast Maine and is such a landmark that it was chosen as the image on the Maine quarter coin. It was built in 1835, and along with the light tower, the keeper's cottage and the brick sound signal house have been preserved. The setting is made even more dramatic by the unusual formations of striped metamorphic rock in the ledges below. The Keeper's Cottage houses the Fisherman's Museum that preserves the region's strong fishing heritage, with captain's logs, models, dioramas, photos, and artifacts, including information on the shipwrecks off this point. The Scenic Point is a favorite site for picnics. To the north, in New Harbor, Colonial Pemaquid State Historic Site preserves the foundations of a colonial settlement and the reconstructed Fort William Henry. The museum and excellent signboards explain the importance of this fort in the conflicts involving English and French settlers and the local Native Americans. The archaeological site has been designated a National Historic Landmark. Number 3. Marginal Way and Agunquit Beaches. The paved walking path along the shore from Agunquit's long sandy beach to Perkins Cove is a beautiful way to see the rocky coast and its crashing surf. Among the rocky cliffs are a series of small sandy coves that offer a more intimate beach experience than Agunquit Beach, which is one of the most popular beaches in Maine. The path is for walkers only, no bikes, no dogs from April to October, and runs about a mile and a half from the end of the village to the scenic wharfs of Perkins Cove. Here, a slender peninsula shelters a small bay, creating a safe haven for small craft. Originally a small fishing port, Today the harbor is overlooked by restaurants and small shops, but you'll still see plenty of fishing boats. All along the path there are benches conveniently placed, both on the path and on overlooks above the sea. You can return to town on the marginal way, walk back along the shady shore road or take the trolley. A Gunquit beach has a gentle slope to the sea and comparatively warm water, which makes it popular with families. The town's shops and restaurants are busy in the summer and the thriving art scene brings more tourists to the nationally known Agunquit Playhouse and the Agunquit Museum of American Art. Number 2. The Old Port and Portland Head Lighthouse. Tourists arriving at Maine's largest city, Portland, invariably head straight for its harbor district, the Old Port. There, along with fishing boats, busy docks, and seafood restaurants, they may find a cruise ship or see the tall masts of a sailing ship, for Portland is still an active port. 
The narrow streets that climb from the dockside commercial street are lined by the brick and stone buildings that supported one of the East Coast's busiest ports from colonial times through the 19th century. Shop for maritime souvenirs in a ship's chandlery, eat seafood on the wharf, and if you're there early enough, watch the fishing boats unload and local chefs choose the menu at the city's restaurants. 4th Street, which parallels commercial, is where you'll find several of these. At the docks, you can board a cruise of Casco Bay or a ferry to visit its islands. A landmark of Casco Bay and the Portsmouth Harbor is Portland Head Lighthouse, which marks the entrance to the harbor. It is one of the most beautiful along the coast, and from its promontory, you can see the city and old port, as well as the passing ships and boats. The museum in the former keeper's quarters illustrates the lighthouses and their keepers, showing how these bastions of maritime safety have changed over the years with advances in technology. Along with historic photos, artifacts on display include Fresnel lenses and exhibits on how they work. Address. 1000 Shore Road, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Number 1. Acadia National Park and Mount Desert Island. The rugged and beautiful stretch of coastline that is set aside as Acadia National Park also surrounds a large inland region of lakes, streams, and forests. It provides a playground for locals and visitors who enjoy the outdoors. The scenic park loop road winds its way through the park past the main attractions and is the best way to tour the park by car. The Handy Island Explorer buses also connect the various attractions, while cyclists and walkers can follow the network of unpaved carriage roads, part of the more than 100 miles of hiking trails for all levels of ability. These include trails to the summit of 1,530-foot Cadillac Mountain, the park's highest point, from which there are views of the coast and islands. Other highlights in the park are Base Harbor Head Lighthouse and the dramatic chasm of Thunderhole. A second and little visited portion of Acadia National Park is farther north, on the Shudik Peninsula, where there are more hiking trails, coastal views, and opportunities for kayaking. There are two large campgrounds in the park and several picnic areas. Throughout Mount Desert Island are waterside villages overlooking small harbors. Of particular interest to garden lovers are Astico Azalea Garden and neighboring Thuya Garden, both in Northeast Harbor. Astico is a Japanese-inspired garden at its most spectacular in the spring, when the azaleas are in bloom around the pond. Thuya reaches its prime in June and July, when the perennial beds are at their showiest.